Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Chemistry Essentials video 8. It's on atomic models. What is a model? A model is essentially a theoretical construct, and so it exists in our brain, and we use it to explain how phenomena works. And so phenomena, let's say gravity, for example, is almost like a black box. We don't get to touch it, but we get to essentially develop models that help to predict it. And so let me find a scientist that's a little brighter than me, and how would Albert Einstein look at gravity? Well, what he was doing, he was looking at the constructs, the models already developed by Sir Isaac Newton, but then he was able to improve on that based on data that he had received. So why does an apple fall to Earth? It's not that there's some magical force pulling it there. What Einstein said is that they're both warping space-time and then these objects are traveling the, the closest path. And so light would travel the, along the same path. And he was able to confirm that using data. And so if we look at the atom, atom is very similar. Atoms are so small. I think in a human body, we have 10 to the 14th cells. And then if we look inside the cells, we have 10 to the 14th atoms in every cell. And so it's incomprehensible how small atoms are and how many of them we have. And so we can use data to predict what an atom looked like. So the Dalton model, that they were just these... Um, spheres that would connect was a model. As we discovered the nucleus, we came up with the Rutherford model, and then we used spectra to come up with the Bohr model, and then quantum physics gave in a, us more of this quantum mechanical model developed by Erwin Schrodinger. And so we're improving this theoretical construct of what, a, what an atom is like. And so we've got an atom, which is phenomena, and then we have an atomic model which is just a construct of what we think that looks like. And what we're able to do is gather data from the phenomena. And as long as that fits our model, then everything is good. But once we start to conflict with that model, then we have to develop a new atomic model. And we play that against the data. As long as everything fits, we use that model. But if it doesn't, then we develop a new atomic model. And that's really how science works. And so an example, if we're looking at the atom, the atom they used to, once they had discovered the nucleus and the electrons, this was our model. It's our theoretical construct of what an atom was like. But once the data didn't fit, once we got spectral data that said that these electrons aren't just moving everywhere, that they're confined to orbits, then we came up with the Bohr model. And that worked until we started to look at ionization energy, learn more about quantum mechanics, and then we developed the model that we have today. And so as long as that works, as long as it fits the data, that's the model that we're going to use. And so let's look at that one transition. How did we go from this Bohr model to more of a quantum mechanical model, well, let's look at ionization energy. Remember, ionization energy is the amount of energy it takes to pull an electron away. And so if this is our model, you've got two electrons in the first shell, then we'd go eight in the next shell, and then we move out like that. Ionization energy should be like this. Hydrogen to helium, that works great. That would be the first subshell, but it should be really smooth as we move all the way from lithium to neon, but it simply isn't. And so we had to develop a new model, and that model consists of, of shells and now subshells, and then those subshells are further divided into orbitals. In other words, why would the ionization increase and then drop down again? It's because of the shielding effect of this 2s orbital. And why would it change here? It has to do with electron-electron repulsion. And so again, a model is simply a theoretical construct. And what we can do is as long as the data fits, we'll use it. But once the data changes, we have to adopt a new model. And so what you should have learned is how to determine that evidence is consistent with the model. And so I would point you back to this. The data coming in from ionization energy didn't fit the model, that Bohr model that we had, so we had to modify it. And we'll probably modify our current model in the future as well, and it'll give us a better and better and better understanding of an atom and what an atom is like. But I hope that was helpful.